Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve the trees in this part 2 of the sunrise series I'm doing. So be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, so here's the selection of pencils I've chosen just for the underdrawing. Just basically just the lemon yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue there, just to get a rough idea where things go. Now in part one I explain in detail how I achieved that sky, so if you haven't seen that be sure to check that out later. Now just to map it out I'm using white and yellow ochre. Reason being is that I don't want to muddy the sky up too much. If I went in there straight away with the browns and the dark greens and the rich colours, it'll be very difficult to actually change that up. So by using a colour that's already in the sky, so the yellow ochre is in the sky colour there, if I can change things around easy and it, it keeps it fresh and clean then. Now I'll continue with the cross-reference technique on how to draw the outline, so this really helps um, when you're sort of mapping out, uh, getting a more of a, an accurate idea where things go. So if you haven't seen how I do this, I have got a video in my channel, Three Ways How to Draw the Outline, and it explains in detail how I use this method of cross-reference so be sure to check that out as well i'll leave a link in the description below i've added another color now to, to actually draw in the outline which is the burnt sienna now burnt sienna and lemon yellow make gold and that's in the sky as well so if i need to change things up i can easily change what i'm drawing there as well so that's another reason i'm using colors that are in the sky so if I make a mistake, I can change things around. In my other landscape pastel painting tutorials on YouTube, I use blue to map out the leaves and branches first and then change up as I go along. So if I make a mistake, I can easily make that a sky colour. So it's just doing a similar thing here. Basically, I'm still doing freehand, but I'm using the cross-reference just to put a point here and there just to help me out but not going too mad with it but because it becomes a crutch then if you're not careful so just do the odd point and then carry on doing the freehand now this underdrawing i'm not interested really getting the colors right or the values right all it is is to get some idea of where things are so all you're doing is mapping out the area and really enjoy the freedom of it because it be, it's really loose and you, you can really relax and just flow with it. I've introduced olive green now just to give a little bit of uh, depth to it in, the, in, a, in a way just to show where the, the actual dark areas are. So I'm just using basic colours. I'm using brown as well here and there. But again, I'm not interested in trying to get the colours correct. All it is is just mapping it out, enjoying the freedom. Now I've kept it mainly freehand because I enjoy the freedom of it. But just using that method, the cross-reference here and there. But don't go crazy with it because it will actually create tension if you're not careful. You'll be frightened of making your own decision of where things go. So just be free with it but just use that now and again. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now, here's the selection colours I'll be using for the rich colour stage. I have three stages, I have the underdrawing, the rich colours and then the detail stage. So this is the rich stage I'm doing now, so all these are the colours I'll be using for that. 
I might even be adding more as I go along, so to see how things go. As the mark making is more refined, um, I need something to lean on, you see, because it's a little bit more detailed. It's not the detail stage, but it's just refining things a little bit tighter. So what I'm leaning on is glassine paper, which is special paper, which is very difficult to smudge your work under. Now I've left a list of materials in the description below if you want to check that out later. What I'm using here now is a tint of lemon yellow. It's a pre-mix pencil from Karen Dash. And so I'm just putting little dots here and there and, and dashes just for the light shining through the branches there. And then maybe glaze over with that with a bit of lemon yellow later. Um, but just basically with this stage, all you're doing now with this is to try and get that richer color and try and get more of the value correct. Now this is where the underdrawing is very valuable because now you can relax because you've got the basic shape because it's all been mapped out for you. But now you're just laying on that richer color, getting that darker feel to it. But I'm using browns now and dark greens uh, and just um, experimenting with these different colors just to see what's needed. So this, I always do this on a small point first. So what I'm doing here is just experimenting, see what works, see what needs to be done. Um, so, and then it becomes easier then because if you can suss it out on a small area, it just makes it straightforward then. So on this part, I found that a warm yellow, burnt sienna and umber together these three colors here really work well so that's the thing is is just to find the combinations that's needed because each part of this tree will have a combination which makes it simple to do so it's just finding that just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patreons for pledging each month it really means a lot to me because it really helps me to produce this free content on youtube if you're considering joining me on patreon and would like the benefit of longer slower and more in-depth videos please find in the description below a link where you can find more details now all this detail can be quite daunting and, and, and can be quite stressful if you let it. My approach is to let go of the mind and focus on the heart and just open up and just allow the movements just to happen. Now it sounds strange but when you experience this you'll know what I mean. It's a case of letting go of the mind. The mind wants to control. It wants to think about things too much and analyze things too much so if you try and analyze all these branches and the different subtleties and colors it'll drive you insane so the way to do it is to trust in feeling and just allow these movements to happen and you'll be surprised how all of a sudden your hands will start moving and you'll pick up the color that what you want and you not even think about the color you'll just pick it up and it'll just happen in front of you and all you do is just observe it and it's an amazing relaxation you get when you connect to this and it's all a matter of just letting go and having faith now i will be bringing out an exclusive video on my patreon page that actually will show exercises and meditation and awareness exercises that you can do that will help to bring out this feeling and connection and opening of the heart. So be sure to watch out for that, uh, be coming out quite soon. As I mentioned, this is just the rich stage, it's not the detail stage, that will come later in the video. But what I'm doing here is actually not only trying to get the values more correct, but also the chroma as well. Now the chroma is the brightness of the colors. So what I'm doing is using a lighter color underneath and glazing over with another color on top and let that shine through. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow.
Because these trees are quite in silhouette as well with the brightness of the sun behind it, I've had to use a little bit of black as well to mix in with the dark colours. Uh, but I always add something with the black, so I, I'll add brown or reds or any colour really. You just got to experiment and to see what look what feels best when you're using black. Because if you use black on its own, it will look a bit dead. So you always have to mix something with it. If you find that your things are getting a bit um, intense with all these different colours and subtleties, I always take a break. You know, even if it's just five minutes, it makes all the difference. So just put your pencils down, go into another room, just sit down and do some deep breathing and just focus on being in the now and then just come back to it. Because what's going to cause tension is if your mind creeps in. So as soon as you start to overthink or you think you're trying to analyse things too much, always take a break, just walk away from it and then come back with a fresh awareness. And just to illustrate this, if I say to you, think about something, anything, what's happened to your breathing? It stopped. So that's when you start to panic because your body can't breathe and then you start to get intense with things and you start to want to rush stuff. So if I say to you, be aware of something, it's totally different. You're still breathing, you're aware of what's around you and you can be relaxed. So there's a difference between awareness and thinking. So always be aware. Now once you've got all your, your basic rich colours in there, it's a case of getting the details in. So what it is with the details is just to allow yourself just to move wherever you need to go. So one minute you'll be working on one area and then all of a sudden you'll go somewhere else. So just let the instincts just guide you and then just basically try and look at it as a whole and try and get the balance as a whole and put in little, little bits of detail here and there uh, but just suggestions of detail not every little hair, the you know branch and leaves in the same spot as the reference but it's your interpretation of it so it's just a case of adding that little bit of detail here and not too much that it, it throws the eye it's a case of just trying to get a balance by just adding the subtleties and being free and relaxed and aware and just feel and observe and melt into the atmosphere of it. Right, so basically it's the same procedure with the other trees in the distance there. Just slight difference which I'll go through with you. I'm using the same principle again of, uh, you know, the three sort of layers I, I do, which is the underdrawing, the rich colours and then the detail stage. So I'm mapping out again, just making sure the shapes are correct. So the outline, just redrawing the outline with form. Um, so you're just basically not worrying too much about the colours again at this stage, you're just getting the shape right not too interested in the the values and chroma it's just getting a feel where things are by just using basic form by just getting the areas correct Now getting the value right now and the chroma, I'm using a little bit of uh, grey mixed in with this as well, with it being distance rather than using white, I'm using a very soft grey. Sometimes that works when you're doing distant uh, trees and that, so it's worth experimenting with that. Because the, all the edges have got to be really soft to make it look like it's in the distance and using that grey just makes all the difference. Some areas are really rich though, even though they're distance because the sun's quite close to it, so it's getting the chroma right at this stage as well. And also correcting the sky around things, so I'm working on the sky as well as the trees. Again using yellow ochre to start with, just to make sure everything's right before I go in there with greens and that, so it keeps everything nice and clean and crisp. Thank you. 
Now these trees are quite in, like in silhouette really, so they're quite deep and dark and so this will actually make the sky seem brighter as well. As I mentioned in the first video, the part one, that it was hard to get the values of the sky correct because I needed that darkness of the trees in there. So now I can, I can judge the sky as well. So I'll be working on the sky as well as doing this, but first blocking in the rich colours, trying to get that chroma into the correct place and getting the value right. And I'm using browns, dark browns, purples, uh, greens, burnt sienna. So once you get those basic colours in, then you can start putting the details in. So now I've got the uh, basic uh, rich colours in, now it's a case of putting the details in and getting everything correct. So I'm using a few Rembrandt sticks here and there as well because they're rich in pigment so occasionally I'm doing that now what I'm doing in the shadows I'm using cold colors I'm using the cold green the cold red for the shadows uh, the silhouette shadows against the warm colors it really makes it look uh, realistic then so using the cold red mixing with the brown and the, and the greens, it really does the trick. Now for the chroma, I'm using warm red and warm yellow with a bit of lemon yellow here and there as well. And once you've done all that, it's just a case of just making that sky color correct as well. So what you're doing is working on those edges. So the detail stage is working on the edges. Some edges need to be blurred, some needs to be sharp, but most of these are blurred anyway. So I tend to sort of just make sure everything is correct around the trees now by getting the colors of the sky shining through the leaves. Here's some more real time for you just to show you how the actual colour shaper works. It's a really good tool to have in your kit. I've left a list of uh, materials that is there in the description if you want to check that out. But it's really good for just blurring those edges with a fine detail. Because you can't get your finger in there you see because it just blurs around it. So these little fine areas I always tend to use uh, like a colour shaper. It's a silicon tip. So it just uh, it's quite smart really, but you can't dig in too, too much. You just need to just dab on it, because if you dig in too much, it just takes the pastel away. So it's got to be ever so subtle with it. But what I'm doing here, here is just using that lemon yellow and just trying to get that feeling of the sky. There'll be some more work to be done on the sky, but I'll leave that to when I've finished the water, which is will be the next video part three so be sure to watch out for the next video which will be next week um, and then you'll see it completed and i'll show you how i do the details everywhere then at the end here's a look at the painting at the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel Thank you so much for watching the videos till the end, I really appreciate it. If you want to explore my channel, here's some links that you might be interested in. Take care, thank you so much, bye for now.